James Conduras, Tony Quinn, and then one of these beautiful new Mercedes AMG GT3s. Chad Nail on Alex Davison oh. kicking off the morning. Peter Hackett, that's aggressive. Oh. And that is a horrible oh. accident down at turn nine. Oh dear. Peter Hackett just getting a bit out of shape under brakes and uh, couldn't pull the car up before crashed into our race winner from yesterday, James Conduras, who was definitely the innocent bystander there. Tony Quinn getting hit as well. We can't see the damage on his car, but now... Uh, got car is out here, Alex. Yeah, McLaren's got damage on the front of it. Well, Craig, uh, Grant Denyer's McLaren also has got some damage on the front. I don't know if that was in the same accident or not, but... Gee, that was a horrible impact. Thankfully, left-hand drive is the Audi, so he didn't cop it in the door, but... Quinn's, Quinn's involved in that one as well. On right rear. Oh man, they were that a huge like, chance as well. Whether that's just a puncture or um, structural damage, who knows? But Roger Largo's out in front. He got a great restart. Um, <laughs> he got the restart over James Conduras, the, the uh, Lamborghini using all its power to get to the first corner. And look, Adelaide's a bit of a, it's got a bit of a strange grid setup. Pole position isn't the best place to start. Well, fortunately, pole position's on the outside. So Roger Largo taking advantage of his second position starting place, which is in effect pole position here. You see Craig Bear darting out four rows back. Roger Largo does a good job to get to the first corner force. We, first, we saw da uh, contact behind here between Tony Quinn and James Conduras and carbon fibre winglets and bits and pieces flying everywhere. <laughs> Cleaner than last year's start to the Sunday race, at least through that part of the track. Carefully. The McLaren, I think one of those big winglets Ooh, on the... Yeah, there it is, right on the back of... The uh, corner of the McLaren oh, flew off there on the outside. Oh, so there's carbon fibre thousands confetti. of dollars worth of <laughs> carbon fibre shattered all over the road now. That was uh, the first contact for James Conduras, the pole sitter. Oh, up and airborne. Taylor with a bit of hang time over the curbs. He's got one of the shortest pit stop times in the front part of the field. This is the moment, though. The Merc... Pulls to the inside oh, of Quinn. Hackett just uh, oh. breaking way too late. Um, you don't see the wheels smoking up in these cars, obviously, because there is ABS braking system, but it doesn't doesn't really magically make you stop oh, quicker. T bone too late. So that's a huge contact. With the bonnet fly up on the on the Mercedes there. That's a brand new 2015 Audi Two and a brand, brand new, new Mercedes. So hopefully. Sounds silly, but hopefully there's not too serious damage on those cars, which are going to risk them for the Grand Prix in a couple of weeks. Good point. And that is the damage to the right rear of a car that was absolutely in contention for the whole thing here this weekend. They're working. Looks like they're going to get that thing back out. Hopefully no. it's just a flat tyre and a bit of body damage. OK, we've got a little bit of work to do down at Turn 9. What's happening in pit lane, Kylie? Well, Marcus Marshall, I was standing right beside you when that happened and the looks said it all shattering. Yeah, James is just uh, minding his own business um, and uh, it's completely taken out. You know, some people just, uh, some drivers will leave their brains at home in their hotel room uh, this morning, unfortunately. So uh, it's unfortunate for Mel Performance Centre and um, Audi 5 Doc, you know, done, James has done such a great job all weekend. Uh, and we're looking for, you know, a podium result there and, uh, hey, what can you do? Too true. Enjoy the rest of the race. Yeah. I've been around a while, so I've seen it a few times, but uh, still disappointing. But, yeah, thanks. Thank you. What else do you say in that situation as the Audi goes on the flatbed? Absolutely clobbered down at turn nine. Hackett unfortunately couldn't stop the Mercedes. The thing is, because the different drivers have different pit stop times, Hackett had the longest stop out of pretty much 